Genesis chapter number 8. I'm going to read a few verses. We'll get to the thought. Verse number 1, the Bible says, And God remembered Noah. Hallelujah, that God remembers us in our low estate. Hmm? Uh, I'm glad no matter what we're going through, God hadn't forgot about us. Hmm? God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the waters assuaged and the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained uh, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. Uh, and after the end of 150 days, the, uh, the waters were abated. Now skip down to uh, verse number 6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and he sent forth the raven which was forth to and fro uh, until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Uh, also he sent uh, forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated uh, from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest uh, for the sole of her foot, so she, and she returned unto him into the ark, uh, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Uh, notice it said the whole earth. Uh, uh, there's a lot of folks said the flood wasn't no big deal. It's a local flood. Well, the Bible says the whole earth was encapsulated in water. Uh, by the way, God said he'd never uh, uh, destroy the world like he did before with the water. So uh, there had been a lot of local floods. Uh, uh, so don't listen to these Bible correctors. Listen to the Bible, huh? But it says, uh, 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 and the, uh, the whole earth, and he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in, unto him into the ark. Uh, and he stayed yet other seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Uh, and the dove came into him in the evening. And lo, uh, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. Uh, so knew, Noah knew that uh, the waters were baited uh, from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days uh, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him anymore uh, and it came to pass uh, aren't you glad for those words uh, aren't you glad he didn't come to stay uh, aren't you glad every trial every storm every problem uh, it comes to pass uh, in the 600th and the first year in the first month uh, first day of the month uh, the waters were dried up from off the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark uh, and looked and behold the face of the ground was dry let's pray father we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Help us now from the Word of God. Help your people. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's been much said tonight about faith. Faith generates obedience. In Genesis 6.22, the Bible says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah had never seen rain, neither did anybody else. Noah had never seen an ark, neither had anybody else. God told Noah it's going to rain and build an ark. And Noah did exactly what God commanded him to do. When you believe God, it will automatically generate obedience in your life. Folks that are not obedient just don't believe God. They don't have faith that God says what he means and means what he says. Folks that hear the gospel and don't get saved, it's because they just don't believe in God yet. Uh, folks that have been saved uh, but aren't faithful, uh, it's because they just don't believe God. Uh, uh, they just got enough faith to save them, uh, but not enough faith to serve God. That's a miserable person right there, huh? Can I say every relationship is built on trust? Yes, sir. Sure. And when you don't trust God, you got a weak Christianity. Hmm? Faith generates obedience. Can I say this? In this ark, we think it rained 40 days and 40 nights. It did. But they were on the ark some five months after that. Can I, I, can I help you with something? If you're cooped up with elephants and giraffes and camels that spit at you and monkeys and every other kind of animal for months, I mean, I go to the elephant house about 10 minutes, all I can handle. They're on there for months. 
And unlike the liberties that uh, uh, Ken Ham has taken down there south, uh, 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 down there in Dry Ridge, uh, I don't believe they live real posh uh, uh, like the living quarters down there. Hmm? And uh, uh, I don't know what they did with all the waste, and I don't know how they watered them, I don't know how they fed them. God told him how to do all that. God didn't think it was important enough for us to know about it, so God didn't put it all down in the Word of God. Uh, but they had to water those animals, they had to feed those animals, uh, had to clean up after those animals. And I want to tell you, months of that, I'd been ready to get off the ark too. Hmm? Do you think Noah got frustrated? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Noah got frustrated too. Hmm? See, faith generates obedience, but frustration is generated from being overwhelmed. I want to tell you something. It got overwhelmed on that ark. Can I say... Uh, uh, there were times when the, uh, uh, the bow of that ship was pointing upwards and there's times when it's pointing downwards. Uh, for 40 days and 40 nights, they didn't know if it was coming or going. Hmm? I want to tell you, if I ride in the back seat of a car, I get car sick. Hmm? Uh, can you say going up and down and up and down and up and down for 40 days and 40 nights? That didn't bring frustration. You got overwhelmed on that ark. Having to deal with those animals. Can I say an animal knows when a storm's coming? A lot of times they get real skittish and real scared, huh? Some of y'all got them little furry things in your house and you give them a, a, a volume to calm them down when a thunderstorm comes, huh? Can you imagine a whole ark full of animals scared to death? That didn't overwhelm them? Yeah, they were frustrated. And that led them or generated a feeling of over, being overwhelmed. The Bible says in Genesis 7, 24, And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. And 150 days of not so smooth sailing, there was some frustration and some sense of overwhelming. You know what? I'm sure there were times the thought crossed their minds, would to God we never got on this thing not realizing that those that didn't get on perished. But how many times in your Christian faith, how many times in the heat of facing trials, you thought, boy, I had it a lot better before I got saved? Hmm? Boy, things were a lot better when the devil didn't camp on my doorstep. Hmm? Oh, you're being super spiritual tonight, but some of you had that feeling. Hmm? Boy, things were going just fine until I met Jesus, and now my whole world's crumbling. Hmm? Frustration is generated from being overwhelmed. Yeah, faith generates obedience, but then frustration can set in. But then, now let me say this. The finality of the storm generates obeisance. Look at verse 20 of chapter 8. What happened when they got off the boat? And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. What did Noah do when he got off the ark? Cuss God? No, he worshiped God. When you come through a storm and God has brought you through, it is a natural response of a believer to worship God. Hmm? My worry is, folks, that never worship uh, I know they're facing something Job says man's days are few and full of trouble so they must not see the hand of God in it or they don't know the hand of God at all hmm? I'm interested in verse number 8 it says and he sent forth a dove he first sent a raven can I say something about ravens they're an ungodly bird but a dove is always associated with the things of God. Many churches has a, have a dove as the symbol of their church. A dove always represents the presence of God or the peace of God. And in several verses here, we see Noah sent forth a dove, the dove came back. Hmm? And can I say, he sent him forth again, he comes back with an olive tree. He sends forth again, he doesn't come back because Noah then knows. He found a resting place. Huh? But we find the dove. 
We find the dove representing the peace of God and the presence of God. Can you imagine how elated they were when they knew they was getting off the boat? Can you imagine when they were saying, Hallelujah, the elephants can take care of themselves? Huh? Can you imagine how excited? Uh, can you imagine uh, 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 all the wealth of emotions uh, knowing that God had remembered them, knowing that God had done what he promised, that God had brought them through the ark of safety? Uh, hey, you know, no, when he got on the boat, he was considered the biggest fool in the world. Uh, hey, uh, he'd preached for 120 years, uh, and they mocked him, and they scoffed at him. Uh, they laughed him to scorn. Uh, I imagine they had parties around his building and said, look at that crazy fool. Uh, uh, what in the world is rain? Uh, hey, but when they got on the boat uh, and God shut the door uh, and it began to rain, uh, hey, uh, those crowd that was a mocking, uh, they, uh, their whole attitude changed. Uh, he got on the ark of fool, uh, but when he got off, he owned the whole world. Uh, hey, friend, when you got on the ark, uh, uh, the ark of the Lord Jesus, uh, your friends and families thought you lost your mind. Uh, friend, when this ark sets sail uh, and lands in harbor, uh, we get off the boat. Uh, we're going to own it all. Hallelujah. Huh? Can you imagine the elation when they knew this was coming to an end. Oh, when they're getting off the boat and they can rebuild their lives. I want to preach on this thought for a minute tonight. I want to preach on after the dove comes the devil. Oh, they'd been through a trial. And then they had that dove, that peace, that presence of God that hope, that elation. But it didn't last long. After the dove comes the devil. Can I say first of all that the devil will show up to hinder after you've had a good experience with the presence and peace of God. Can I say first of all he'll show up to hinder your family. Look in chapter number 9. Chapter number 9, look with me in verse number 20. The Bible says, And Noah began to be an husbandman. That means a farmer. He's planting crops. He's growing vegetables. He's uh, uh, starting to turn his life around. Uh, uh, he began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, uh, and he was uncovered within his tent. Uh, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. Uh, and Shem and Japheth took a garment, uh, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. Uh, and their faces were backward, uh, and they saw not their na father's nakedness. Uh, and Noah awoke from his wine, uh, and knew what what his younger son had done unto him and said cursed be Canaan uh, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren uh, and he said blessed be the Lord God of Shem and, Shem and Canaan shall be his servant uh, God shall enlarge Japheth uh, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant uh, uh, listen uh, 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 everything was going good uh, they got off the ark uh, God had been a blessing uh, and it wasn't long the devil shows up uh, and he heard Hurts the family. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, the devil wants to attack your home, uh, wants to attack your family, uh, wants to destroy your marriage, uh, wants to destroy your children, uh, wants to destroy your grandchildren. Uh, and honey, the devil don't fight fair. Uh, hey, what a blessing for the presence and peace of God. Uh, but friend, take note, be on guard. Uh, uh, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Uh, hey, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant, uh, your adversary has a roaring lion seeking about whom he may devour, uh, and he's after your family. Uh, there's once a saying as goes the home, so goes the church. So goes the nation. You know why America's in the shape she's in? Uh, you know why we have gay rights today? Uh, you know why we have liberals running the country? Uh, you know why we have a nation looking at socialism? Uh, you know why sodomites are running the streets? Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, uh, because uh, we've allowed the family to be attacked by the devil and haven't recouped. You know why there are empty pews in the churches? Because the home isn't right. 
When the home's right, the church will be right. When your home life's right, your church life will be right. And so goes the nation. America's morally bankrupt because churches, so-called churches in America, are morally bankrupt. Uh, uh, we don't have pulpits flaming preaching righteousness and holiness anymore. Uh, uh, we have uh, 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 seminars on how to protect your finances. Uh, and let's move the pews out of the way and have Christian aerobics. Uh, and let's just go have kum all the time. Uh, and nobody's standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Uh, and our homes have become a joke. Mom and dad fights all the way to church and they wonder why little Johnny isn't interested in Sunday school. Mm. You get here, mom and dad pick out somebody and all the way to the restaurant. They're running them down the road and they wonder why little Johnny don't have confidence in people at church. And little Johnny gets about 16 they wonder why little Johnny never comes to church anymore because you haven't taught him to respect God respect the word of God respect the man of God respect the people of God and truly he doesn't respect you either can I say ch children can pick out a hypocrite far, far quicker than adults hmm? I'm telling you after the dove comes the devil and he seeks to hinder your family hmm? how's your family doing tonight hmm? how many of God's people have allowed things to hinder their family from serving God. Let me ask you a question right now. Right now, I'm just I'm not being ugly, I'm just being honest. 150 years from now, what do you got going on in your family that's hindering them from God? Is it going to be worth it? Wow. Hmm? Is it going to be worth it? Hmm? You better learn yourself to seek God first. And teach your children to put God first. Or well, then, my dear friend, the devil's going to take up shop in your house. He shows up to hinder your family. Can I say, after the dove comes the devil and he shows up to hinder your fire. Remember when you was on fire for God? How come you're not tonight? Is he not the same God? Is he not still on the throne? Is the word of God still not, be, uh, still not true? Then how come you don't have any fire? Because hmm? after the dove, the devil shows up. You know 1 Kings 18, Elijah prayed down fire. You know the people who were halt between two opinions start crying, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. You know that day they slew 150 prophets of Baal, or 400 prophets of Baal, and 450 prophets of the grove, 850, sorry, no good, false prophets were slow, slew that day. That's chapter 18 of 1 Kings. Chapter 19. Verse number 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Elijah leaves town, heads for a juniper tree. Why? Because the devil sought to hinder his fire. Do you know why about three days after revival meeting you lose your fire? Because the devil will do everything in his power to keep you from throwing another log on the flames. It's amazing how shallow we are. We can be in church three or four days, be excited about God, and then all it takes is one sorry, wicked co-worker to steal your fire. Hmm? Boy, before revival, we get to praying, get to seeking God's face. During revival, we try to be obedient to God and everything. But as soon as the preacher leaves town, we quit praying, we quit reading our Bible, and all of a sudden, the devil throws something in front of us, and there goes our fire. It's gone. Hmm. After the dove comes the devil. He'll not only hinder your family and your fire, he'll hinder your fasting. Now, I know that's a cuss word in most Baptist churches. It's still Bible doctrine. That we're to be given to prayer, 
and fasting. Yes, sir. But unfortunately, our prayer lives have turned into nothing more than us asking God for a big shopping list to make our life more, more pleasurable and easier. Well. Our prayer life isn't seeking God and His power and His presence. Because if you seek His power and His presence, you'd realize you have to do a little fasting too. Yes, sir. Hmm? There's been times I've called for you to fast from your social media, and God's blessed our services. How's that working out for you now? When was the last time you fasted from that stuff? Hmm? Say, preacher, you're meddling. I think I'm still preaching. Huh? In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, the Lord Jesus has come to John the Baptist at the River Jordan. Asked John to baptize him. John said, no, I need to be baptized you. And Jesus said, permitted to be so. Why did Jesus have to be baptized? He wasn't a sinner. Jesus had to be baptized because John was still under the law and he had to fulfill the law. And John was preaching uh, 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 baptism as remission of sins. And if Jesus hadn't done that, then he wouldn't have fulfilled the law and you and I would have no hope today. Jesus didn't get baptized because he was a sinner. He was baptized into his humanity. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Just trying to help you. Huh? But Matthew 3.16 says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. By the way, you can't sprinkle somebody. when you know, You're not coming out of the water when you're sprinkling on them. Hmm? He come up out of the water. Means he went in the water. Huh? You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Huh? And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, hmm? and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. By the way, right there is the first time since Jesus left heaven, 30-something years prior, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are all three together. Hmm? Huh? You hear the Father's voice, the Spirit of God descends on him like a dove, and there's the Son of God. Hmm? I'd say it's a pretty good day. You got the presence of God, you got the peace of God, got the power of God, got God. And all three, the trichotomy, right there together. Huh? Been good to be there that day, huh? But that's chapter three. It's how it closes out. Chapter four, verse number two. And when he, Jesus, had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. After the dove comes the devil. Yeah. Jesus has fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says he was hungered. His flesh was at its weakest point. That's when the devil always show up. Yes, he won't show up right middle revival meet when God's a blessing. You can't get enough. He'll wait till he gets you alone on the job when the boss has cussed you or co-workers cussed you. He'll wait till he gets you alone at school when everybody's making fun of you. He'll wait till some other weak moment in your life and he'll show up to destroy everything that you've just submitted to God. Hmm? When you're fasting, get in the mind of God, oh, he'll try to put thoughts in your mind. You just get so close. If you, you fast 40 days and 40 nights and commune with God, you're going to be pretty solid. Amen. But when your flesh gets weak, that's when it's showing. Let me just say this. If Satan will tempt Jesus, you think he has any problem camping on our doorstep? Mm. After the dove comes the devil. He seeks to hinder your family, your fire, your fasting. He seeks to hinder your fervor. Hmm? You know, in Acts chapter 2, the fulfillment of the promise of the Spirit of coming. By the way, that's Joel chapter number 2, I believe it is. When he promised your sons and daughters would prophesy and the power of God would come. Jesus said, I must go away that the comfort will come. Jesus told them right before he ascended, he said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. They prayed uh, for, 40 day, uh, for 10 days and 10 nights in the upper room and boom, the promise came. Peter gets up and preaches under the power of God. Verse 41, And they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. 
We find that they continue daily uh, 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 in fellowship and breaking of bread in the, in the houses of the disciples. They just went from house to house and God was a blessing. The fervor, the excitement, the revival, the joy going on. Uh, uh, folks being saved. Uh, uh, can you imagine if 3,000 souls just got added to you? I mean, the excitement. I mean, wow! What fanfare. That's chapter 2. Chapter 4. Verse number 3. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it is now eventide. How be it? I mean, they arrested them. Hmm? They arrested Peter, John, the rest of the disciples said, Hey, now we're not having this. How be it? Many of them, when they heard the word, believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. So 3,000 got saved on the day of Pentecost. Now, another 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Church has grown in leaps and bounds. Hmm? Verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. It's the first persecution on the church. The devil seeks to hinder your excitement, your fervor, your zeal for God. You'll show up right after God's done great things. Why? Because the more that builds, the more folks are going to get saved. The more prodigals are going to come home. The more excitement there is for the things of God. Listen, He knows He's lost you if you're saved. He knows He can never get you lost again. But He does know He can keep you from sending, seeking somebody else to get to Jesus. Are you listening? Hmm? You, know what a, you know how to tell when you need revival? When you quit having a burden or you quit having a desire to tell others how to be saved. When's the last time you gave somebody a track? When's the last time you, you told somebody, hey, you need to come to church, you need to hear about Jesus? When's the last time you had a burden to see somebody saved? You wept tears over them? Sounds like we may need some revival. After the dove, then comes the devil. Can I say this? He seeks to hinder your faith. Remember Paul on the ship, Acts 27? I won't read it, but you know, I mean, it's been many days. They haven't seen sun. They think they're all going to perish. They've done throwing everything off they know to throw. And the Lord shows up, speaks to Paul, and he says, Sirs, the Lord sent an angel. He said, Sirs, wherefore I believe God. He said, Nobody's going to be lost, just the ship. He said, You all should have listened to me, but you didn't. But you better listen to me right now. The Lord's going to protect us. And you know the story. And the ship got busted up, but every one of them made it to safety. Paul had faith. He believed God. Hmm? But then the devil shows up. That's Acts 27. Acts 28, verse number 3. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, he laid them on the fire, and there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. You know a devil's in a snake. Yeah. Huh? But again, the devil lost because he shook him off in the fire. And then all of them on the Isle of Melita thought he was a god. He said, no, but let me tell you about God. Yeah. Uh, many of them got saved. And what a blessing. Hmm? Can I say, the devil seeks to hinder your fight, your stand. Why do you think God told us to put on the whole armor of God? Because He knew we'd have a fight on our hands. Can I say, modern day Christianity paints Christians out to be little wimpy welcome mats that you just bow and cater to everybody and let them do whatever they want to do and you're just supposed to be little beep, 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 beep. Yeah. I'll tell you something. If you're going to live for God, you've got to be a warrior. You're in a battle. And our enemy doesn't fight fair. And he seeks to hinder your fight and your stand and your commitment to God. In Daniel chapter 6, you know the story. Daniel's elevated and the other men are absolutely jealous 
They know Daniel prays three times a day. So they hoodwink the king and making up a decree that no, nobody should pray to anybody but the king. King like that. Verse number 10 of Daniel 6. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in the chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did a four time. He was committed to the fight. Uh, some of you on your job, people will say, you're not allowed to witness. Says who? I believe we still have a Bill of Rights. Uh, hmm? So well, that offends people. Well, I'm just trying to keep them out of hell. Hmm? Well, you're not allowed in public to announce that you're a Christian. Says who? You're not allowed to pass out tracts door to door. Says who? As a matter of fact, the Supreme Court about eight years ago found that we can do that. Hmm? Amen. Just because there's a few uh, uh, at the top of the CEO level that doesn't want any uh, 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 folks complaining, so they'll tell you you can't, doesn't mean you can't. Right. Hmm? Right. Kroger's called and said that Tony wasn't allowed to put tracks in the beer cases anymore, but I'm sure he does. He puts tracks everywhere. I went to see Sam in the hospital, went in to wash my hands in the men's room. There's our tracks all over the men's room up there at the children's hospital. Huh? Just because they say you can't don't mean that you've got to quit fighting. They told Daniel, you're going to go to the lion's den. He said, oh, well. He opened up the windows like he always did. He prayed toward Jerusalem. Hmm? So what happened? Verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Hmm. The devil tried to hinder your fight. The devil said, okay, I got him now. Yeah. What the devil doesn't realize is the one who made the lions. <laughs> huh? Amen. Daniel said, oh, king, live forever. My God has sent an angel. Shut the lion's mouths. He said, I was supposed to be dinner. I just used him as a big pillow. I had a good night's sleep. Listen, that lion snore all night. Huh? The devil will show up after your dove. He wants to hinder your family, your fire, your fervor, your faith, your fight. But can I say this? Never lose sight of the fact we have a friend. Amen. Proverbs eighteen twenty four: A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Huh? Romans 8.31, what shall we then say to those things if God be for us, who can be against us? Huh? Yeah. Well, hey, uh, 1 John 4.4, 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. See, once you have a dove, the devil's no match for you. When you learn that you've got a friend, and you just lean on the friend. Good. You do know the devil mess with you till he sees your friend. Huh? Yeah. When your friend is on the scene, the yeah. devil flees. Yeah. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Right. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Right. Hey, the next time the devil tries to hinder, just run to Jesus. Uh, every step you take towards him, he takes a step towards you. Uh, won't be long, the devil lose all sight of you. Uh, for he'll see Jesus uh, and friend. You'll find the dove just as sweet as he's always been. Yes, sir. We face a real enemy. <laughs> but we serve a real Savior. He just didn't save you from hell. He saved you from all the imps of hell. My dear friend, He will always be right on time. You don't have to cower when the devil shows up. Matter of fact, Jesus showed us the pattern in Matthew chapter 4. The Word of God silenced that devil right now. The devil only messes with those he fears. When you have the presence and peace of God in your life, he fears you. Because you have something that he has tried to manufacture and can't. 
and something that he has tried to imitate and he can't and something that he knows that everybody in the world truly is seeking and he tries to quench it at every turn and when you're full of God you are the greatest threat to the devil and so he'll strive to hinder every every facet of your life and friend let me just say this when he shows up never lose sight of the fact you're no match for him by yourself he'll destroy every one of us I hear these, these idiots on TV and even idiot Baptist preachers that will tell you what you can do to defeat the devil. I hear them on TV where they say, devil, get out of here, and they start throwing... T do you know when you call the devil's name and you say anything to him, you're praying to the devil? The Bible says that even Michael didn't durst accusation against him. If an archangel anointed of God didn't take on the devil, what thinks you, makes you think you got the right to? Hmm? We were created lower than the angels. You're no match for the devil. I've always found when the devil shows up, best thing I can do is find Jesus. Hmm? Best one I can talk to is Jesus. Best one I can get after is Jesus. Huh? I know I'm no match for the devil. Huh? I, I'm no match for my own flesh. Mm. But I found that the things of God and the Spirit of God can overcome anything. So I'll just go hang out there. Yeah, the devil may show up to hinder. But can I say? Again, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Don't give place to the devil. We're not ignorant of his devices. My dear friends, just, just bathe yourself in the things of God. Put on the whole armor of God and do what God would have you to do, which is always trust in God. And friend, the devil, he'll go on down the road. Yes, sir. Hmm? You resist him, he flees. Oh, he'll throw some things at you. But hey, just recognize who it is. It's the devil. I'll just stick with Jesus, huh? And if you don't know what to do, just get on your knees and start calling on Jesus. Mm, the devil hates that. Because he knows it, the, the farthest thing he can drive you to is to your knees. And once you get on your knees, all of heaven is paying attention to you. And God dispatches exactly what you need to overcome the devil. Oh, thank God for those dove experiences. But don't get caught up thinking because the dove shows up, everything's going to be wonderful. Won't be long, the devil's going to come up. But hey, you can still have dove experiences. The three Hebrews did in the fire, Daniel did in the lion's den, Paul did on the ship. I'm telling you, everywhere you find folks in, in problems, the Lord shows up. So if he's no respecter of persons and he showed up for them, won't he show up for you? Just keep looking for him. Keep trusting and obeying, and he'll show up. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe some of you have been hindered by the devil. Might be a good night to come and ask for some help. Maybe God's given you some help and some relief. It'd be a good time to come and thank him. Maybe God spoke to you about something totally different. Now would be a good time to do business with God. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not saved. Well, why in the world would you want to spend eternity with the devil? Why would you want to die and go to hell when Jesus was so wonderful to come and die and pay for your sins so you wouldn't have to go to hell? Why don't you come tonight and get saved? be a good night for that. Oh, maybe God spoke to you about something else. You just mind God. They're all praying. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. I'm glad the sorry no good devil's no match for you. Father, we need your help. We need your touch. You said without you we can do nothing. So, Father, we're leaning on you tonight. There might be some here tonight, their very foundation is being rocked. I pray that you would give them strength and help tonight. Maybe some here tonight, the Lord just needs some, some peace. I pray you'd walk their way. Maybe some here tonight, oh, they've just been up against it and just need a little relief. I pray you'd blow a, a 
wind from another world is in relief. Maybe some here tonight just thanking you, giving you praise. What a blessing. There may be some here tonight unsaved. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost will disturb their souls so much they realize they're going to spend eternity with that sorry devil. The lake of fire. Unless they repent and trust in Christ. And I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.